he was the first person to say to me, like, wow, I've never seen a locker room like this. I've been in this business for all these years. He goes, you guys, like, like, you're all together. Like, you're all sitting in the huddle around the monitor watching each other's matches and cheering for your for match to be better than the one before. Like, everybody wanted this company to, to, to become something. I wanted to make it a family atmosphere amongst the boys, and that sounds so out of left field, but it was important to me because I thought if, if, if we're all in this together and they see that I'm not a typical promoter, I'm not going to screw anybody or fuck anybody. And I never did. I never wrote a bad check in my life. Never made a promise I couldn't keep. You know, if they, once they saw that, it, it, it flowed. How did an honest guy work so long with Paul? I don't mean this isn't it. So we, we, all the stories are on the, the shows with Paul Heyman. That didn't become an issue until closer to when I decided I want to leave. Now you're getting, now you're in the 95. That's next. That's our next DVD. Right. This is only 92 and 93. Right. 94 and 95 will do next. So at this point, he's a well, straight he, shooter. Yeah. As far as I knew. I never saw any evidence otherwise. He never would say to me, hey, like, as he would years later, let's just, I'm just going to tell him this and we'll, here's, never. Did he ever want you to be complicit in telling later on in 95, not here, but later on, want you to be complicit in the webs that he would weave? That's what dissolved our partnership, yeah. Because you wouldn't do it? Yeah. 100%. You wouldn't lie to a wrestler. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you a story. We were in New York doing a show with Tommy D, was his name, promoter in New York City. New York, do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I remember, just remember the Bruce okay. Brothers were one. This is why I remember this. And uh, he's, I guess he was buying the show. And he's supposed to pay me, and I'm, we're using his, his venue and some of his guys. And that's what he wanted to get some of his guys on our show. We we're starting to grow. And the sure goes, I can't pay the guys. I said, what do you mean you can't pay the guys? He goes, listen, write them all checks. By the time they get home, to the phone, you know, but then I'll have had the money. To, I, I said, I'm not going to write them checks knowing that I'm not me. I'm not going to write them bad checks. It's your show. You're, just, you're supposed to be paying everybody, paying their money. This is Tommy, D, yeah, not promoter. Paul. Say, no, okay. The promoter. He goes, come on, man. You're, you're, I said, no. I said, yo, Don, Ron, the Bruce Brothers. You know, I said, this guy wants to be, give you bad checks. You know, he they, they wants to fuck you. They, they'll get you later. Said, what are you thinking? Well, they picked him up. This was this guy's a little chunky dude. <laughs> Bruce Brothers. They picked him up in the air. His feet were dangling. You know, like, you're going to fucking pay us, brother. You know, I said, well, let me go and brief you. His brief also, Sammy took his briefcase. Like, these guys were never going to kill him. I said, don't beat him up. He'll you know, never get paid. But then he called me, he's like, my briefcase is gone. And I said, I've located it. I found it, Sam had taken it and thrown it over the fence or something. And he went around and got it later on. I said, you pay the boys, the briefcase comes back unopened. So now I came up the money in the next 24 or 48 hours. Right. Yeah, but I won't screw money. Uh. Right. But, I mean, that's not Paul. I mean, this, is, this is a different guy. Oh, it's just another, right. it was another example that I just would not be complicit in anything that I thought. We'll come back later and say, oh, this guy fucked me. I don't mind fucking him back. And like, I'll tell you something about Hawk. You, you said that. We had Hawk in, a, in a, one of the like, semi means let's say, in an arena show. He calls me up, I guess, the day before. Oh, I got a deep voice. He says, I, I got to be honest with you, brother. I'm not going to be there Saturday night. Hey, what are you talking about? We've been advertising this on TV for like the last four years. I ain't gonna lie to you. You never lied to me, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm on lockdown. Oh, you're in jail? He goes, no, lockdown. I'm just smoking the, the, the shit in the mountains in a cabin and I'm not coming out for a couple of days. Thank you for being honest. <laughs> like, but no, I, and on some level, he would never, he would just no show to anybody else. He right. just told me like a couple of days later, yeah, I got something happened to play. But he didn't do that. He said, I, I respect for you. I'm not gonna lie to you. Right. I'm getting fucked up, but I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. He's I'm going to choose locking myself in a yeah. cabin and smoking crack. I'll tell you what. As opposed to oh, math, whatever. Next, next time I come in, I'll do one show for free and one for, uh, you know, for money. Oh, you know, you didn't pay me yet. I'll give you at least one free show. And he did. Right. He's man Honor Among word. Thieves. It's a weird. It is. It's a weird place to find uh, Zen. Yeah, I mean, I guess, but still, that. that that was, you gotta respect the guy, at least to say to you, I'm giving you a heads up. So you get there and find I'm not there. I'm right. telling you, a day ahead of time, I'm not coming. Right. 
like maybe Sid, who might have a softball game or right. something like that. Um, you said Hawk said to you he was uh, shocked never, by the unity. He said, I've never seen a dresser. Where, right. Where nobody's trying to, there's nobody here trying to fuck anybody. Like, nobody here is trying to, like, he's ever I am. Right. You got to wonder what, what this guy's up really about. What's it? Here, it's like, it comes to the curtain, the whole fucking dresser's running around hugging you and telling you what a great match you right. had. Right. And we always hear that here. And in our, what, a 17, 18 hour chronicling of the history of this company so far, we always hear that. And it's usually attributed to Paul Heyman. Maybe by fans, maybe because it's what we see like in documentaries or, or the talking heads in those shows from Connecticut. Um, see, the thing is, when it was like that, he wasn't running things yet. Well, what the, I want to say is, line. now we're talking back in 93, um, w were you kind of the spiritual guru? I'd like to think so. I'd like to, kind of like, a, not like a father figure per se, but I'd like to think that they knew they could trust me, they knew I'd have their backs. I always did. And they had mine. And they all believed, we all believed. We've t we never saw audience reactions like this mm -hmm. anywhere. I mean, you go, you, were, you go watch a WDF show back then, where, you know, again, the reason I got in the business is when I just saw uh, Papa Shango make the ultimate warrior throw up from across the arena. I said, that's it, I'm done. That's when I decided I wanted to make my own promotion. That is the very moment. I can capitalize that very moment. And I thought to myself, they, we all believe it. Like, we all think, you know what, guys? Like, the football like, our team, our football team, we've, we're, we have a chance to go to the playoffs this year. Like, we, we can build this. There's such passion here, it's crazy. We're selling more tapes than we're getting seats in the arena because we're starting getting around. Also, we get, after an arena show, I get an order for 40 tapes from Japan. I go, Japan? How the fuck do they know what we're, how do they know what we're doing here? There was tape traders. Right. And, they, and that's how we grew the company, that's how we survived the company. Because the house show sale ticket sales weren't enough. That locker room um, camaraderie. camaraderie and passion and all that. Uh, what percentage of it can I attribute to uh, Paulie's time at the pulpit and uh, his inspirational well, speeches? Yeah, that, was, that came later after Eddie was going now. Right. But that was he was a great motivational speaker. He okay. was the guy. He was the, getting him out there to be the new Rocky guys. We've got this thing, but but in the day to day, every day, give and take. You know, when Mikey Whipwreck didn't have enough money to get home, and they had to come to my store and say, I didn't want to ask him, but I can't I don't have enough money to get home. I said, all right, here, I'm just going to train you. Like, let me help you out. Why'd you spend all your money you get me this weekend? You know, shouldn't you budget out enough for a train ride home? But they could come to me. No questions asked. That's why I felt.